Brother Aaron Thompson, come just now. Come. Come. If you're singing, if you're testifying, you come. Come right away. Just something short. Uh, when I was on the way to camp Thursday, I got in a wreck and was very fortunate to have come out of it with no lasting effects. I should not have walked away from it. So I just want to say, uh, Satan tried to kill me Thursday, and he couldn't, so praise God. Praise God. Thank God for his protecting hand. Amen. Where's the one that lost in wrestling?
what what happened? Um, hold on, hold on. What uh, what happened the other night? He went. They took him to the ER. What happened to his ankle, Lily? Two fractures. Where? Two fractures in the lower leg, I believe, and near the ankle, down low. Two fractures, and it had um, films, x-rays. Did you go, what happened? Say what happened. Glory. <laughs> well, I'm going to start off by saying, praise the Lord. All right, right there. I can do it, yeah. I can say it. Well, um, the doctor said that I was going to be in a cast and won't be able to walk for about two and a half months. And I went through the prayer line, and well, God said otherwise. Amen. Where's your cast? Where's your cast? It's gone. Praise the Lord. His cast is gone. His leg is healed. Uh, praise God. Amen. Stay away from Brother Joseph. He'll put the slamming on you. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. I know there's a lot of other testimonies we could get to, and specifically to last night. The Lord was just wonderful. Amen. Amen. You raise your hand and say, Lord, I received my touch. I had an experience. Amen. I'm going to go into the service. The rest of the service will be receiving another offering this morning, so remember that as the brothers will come. We have some announcements, and if the brothers could come up and also take the uh, offering on the platform, that would be great. Uh, I have money today, so does anybody want to match it? <laughs> Joe, you can do it. All right. Thank you all for giving, though. I know we took an offering every service, so and towards the expenses of the camp and things, so pre really appreciate uh, you doing that and for your giving, and the Lord will bless you. We know that. Also, there's a lost and found um, on the two tables outside there, outside the door of the lobby outside. Remember to check that if you're missing something. Um, I even saw a Stanley out there. Or Stanley, someone lost their Stanley. Wow. And some knockoff Ray-Bans. Yeah. I had those when I was 16, too. Some other, some sh sandals. I mean, go get your sandals and take them home and all those things. And, and uh, there's also, uh, what, what was on the, black, on the back screen last night? What was on the back screen? Cloud. And there's some pins. Brother Wayne's wearing one. Brother Ray's wearing one. Nathan, some pins. There's some lapel pins and tie pins. There's different length for the class on the pins. So those are available back it'll be on the tables outside and, and the tea search and such I think so remember that help yourself those will be um, giving away the pins as long as they last so I believe we're going to be seeing some clouds being worn around <laughs> and some clouds walking around <laughs> amen remember also the McNulty's uh, immediately after I think most of the dorms are being are uh, cleaned and you packed up your clothes immediately after camp. If you see anything on the grounds, please pick it up and put it in the trash. Also, the McNulty home will be offering dinner this afternoon. Everyone is welcome there and invited there. The directions are in the lobby or you can do a QR scan, I believe, on the door out there. So remember that. Also, I think that's it for the announcements. We want to go to Lord in prayer this morning. We have some needs. I ask Brother Gideon if you come lead us to Lord in prayer. Let's remember a request for Sister Michelle Thompson. I've seen Brother Dale here this morning from our church. Sister Michelle Thompson needs a touch in her body. Let's remember her. I've seen Brother Andy Thompson in service this morning. We thank God he's able to be here. Brother Andrew was speaking about him 
last night. So we're thanking God for the victory and for the healing. Amen. If you have a need, let's agree together and commit this service to the Lord. Brother Gideon, if you come. Let's bow our heads. Dear Lord, we're grateful, Lord, for another day, Lord, another service. Lord, we're coming just with grateful hearts for what you did last night, how you touched each and every one, Lord. We're thankful, Lord, for Sister Missy, Lord. I pray that you'd heal her, Lord, just completely. Pray that this man of God would be able to step out of the way. Lord, speak to my heart, speak to each and every one. We're asking it just once more, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. As they come for the offering, bring the bucket up here. Where's the bucket? Okay. I'll make sure they get mine. Thank you. Put that Benjamin in there. Thank you all youth for traveling this weekend, for coming in, and all those that came with you. So nice to be together, amen. Have you had a good time? Sure you have. Sure, we've had a wonderful time, amen. We're looking forward to the message from Brother Josh this morning, and we're gonna go out enthused. Amen, we're gonna keep the tank full. How do we keep the tank full? Stay in the word, stay in the Amen. Not stay in the gym, but stay in the word. <laughs> Sister Bethany is going to come sing for us this morning as she comes. Amen. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory. Let me lift my voice, cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. Yes, so oh, I want to see, look upon, oh, there to sing of this saving grace. From without, within, but my Lord leads me on through Him. I must win. Oh, I want to see Him look upon His face. There to sing forever. Well, on the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Service for my Lord, dark may be the night, but I'll cling more close to Him. He will give me light. Satan snares may vex my soul, turn my thoughts aside, but my Lord goes ahead, leads whatever He ties. Oh, I want to see Him look upon His face. Oh, of his saving grace on the streets of glory. Let me lift my voice, cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. What happened to you last night? I got a little drunk. Oh, <laughs> oh my. You got a little drunk last night. Amen. He's a little hangover this morning. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. 
there to sing forever of His saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice, oh, cares all past, oh, my last ever to rejoice. I'm one of them, hallelujah, one of them. I'm so glad, I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. seated this morning. Sister Rebecca Adams, you come this morning. And Sister Rebecca Adams. And Say I'm 
I'm defenseless against the enemy. Just hand me down, the armor doesn't suit me. I've got the only weapon I need. Cause the giant here before me doesn't see the God behind me. If he did, he'd be on his knees. I come in the
you're my glory, you're my oh, and the lifter of my head, for thou, thou. Your path. 
bit better than that. Let's give him praise. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to the Lamb. He's worthy of all of our praise. Amen. Good morning to everybody. Amen. We've certainly been blessed in these meetings. With the quality of the word of Brother Josh and Brother Andrew, it's tremendous. It's, 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 due, it's due season food for the youth and for all of us. Uh, this meeting came about uh, when uh, we were sitting in the, about four years ago, we were sitting in the church office. Nathan was sitting there and he said, see, Grandpa, there's an opening at St. Mary's camp. He said, uh, do you think we could have a youth camp? And I had to ponder for a while because I know it's more than just having a youth camp. It takes a lot of workers. But, you know, Brother Ronnie Long, and I, I don't want to just say about Brother Nathan, Brother Ronnie, but their wives. They, they put their heart in. Let's give them a praise. But I saw the vision just come to pass in Nathan's heart and, and Brother Ronnie's heart. It just, and, and, and all the saints just got right behind it. Because I knew as I was sitting there pondering about it, whether should we have it or what, but I knew that it was going to take a lot of work. And you know, not only the local church, but you saints that have come and put your heart and soul into it to help make this a success. God bless you all for that, amen. <laughs> We're living in a very crucial time. And everything that God has for you should open your heart. Because this is the moment that the Bible was speaking about, that there'd be an end time bride. And there's never been a day like this day. And you know, the brothers, for those that don't understand it, you know, they're saying, the, you know, talking about the message, the message, the message. Maybe some youth even don't even know what it is. It's actually Jesus Christ. Amen. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Amen. And that's why you see what you see. Glory to God. That's why you see. And as an elder, I just standing here last night, uh, the last three years, four years, just seeing what God does. <laughs> you know, the Lord came into my life in 1967, my wife and I. I want to tell you, young people, it don't hold just from camp to camp. It holds all these years. So I tell you, to God be glory. To God be the glory for all things. We're going to invite Brother Josh to come this morning. I'm going to say I'll open my heart one more. I'm, I'm sure there's weary, many weary people here. But if we can just stay alert this morning and say, God, whatever you have for me, I want to take it home with me. Let's sing only believe, only believe. Amen. Let's just open our hearts and minds. Only believe.
bless you this morning. Amen. It's uh, certainly a great honor and a privilege to be here with you. Amen. Maybe you could just be seated just for a, a, a minute. Amen. I just want to take this opportunity to just uh, thank uh, Brother Nathan and Brother Wayne, Brother Brother Erickson for uh, the invitation to be here and just to be a part of these meetings. And I, I believe that we can say we've truly been blessed. And Amen. We uh, appreciate um, Brother Andrew Glover. Amen. How many? How many just appreciates Brother Andrew's ministry? And, and I uh, so thankful. Amen. You know, I believe that God just give a, a, a Brother Andrew just a special connection with the with the young people, and uh, we just thank God for that. And and so um, we're just happy to be here this morning and. Um, I, I believe that um, Brother Joel Yeski is. Are they here this morning? Um, maybe or, or somewhere. And uh, we, um, Brother Joel and Sister Robin, Amen. They, um, I understand that they've. Um, God has put a child in their life, and and um, we, um, you know, sometimes the circumstances um, of. Um, that um, that surrounds things, you know. Sometimes uh, those circumstances can be, uh, you know, so difficult, and and there's many problems that, that that you know. But I think about the the circumstances, you know, that uh, uh, that brought the woman to the well that day, and it was because of the circumstances of her life, why she was there at that time. As Brother Ram says, she couldn't come to the well with all the other uh, women, you know. But it was because of those circumstances it brought her to the well at that time. And, and you know, sometimes you think, well, things just happen by chance. But not with God, friends. <laughs> Nothing happens by chance. And somebody say, well, you know, that was a mistake. Or, you know, maybe, you know, uh, somebody have a child. And they said that was a mistake. But, see, God don't make no mistakes. Amen. I believe that this morning. And so they had a desire that we would just have prayer with them and over this uh, young man that God has placed in their, in their life. And I believe they're in the process of maybe uh, adopting him. And so I, I tell you, um, I thought about that. Uh, my, my wife was sharing with me some of the testimony of how God brought this to pass. And uh, as I thought about it, I thought about all the children all the little children in the world that would maybe be, uh, you know, under these circumstances. But God would take one and bring him in a home like this. And uh, listen, friends, God, God, he knows what he's doing this morning. Amen. So. Maybe we just uh, join together. Maybe if some of the brothers would like to come this morning and just join with us. Amen. What's his name? Josiah. Amen. Amen. We're just going to pray. You know, sometimes um, with, the, with the circumstances um, that these children are born in, it has lasting effects uh, on, on them. But we're just going to pray that, that every, every effect... Uh, the circumstances that he was born in would just be be washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ and amen Lord Jesus Lord we thank you Lord for this family Lord as we look at this couple God Lord and how that you have now blessed them and we know Lord that no matter how you give our children to us Lord Whatever channel or however you decide to do it, Lord, Lord, our children are a gift from you and they're our heritage. And Lord God, I pray, Lord, you see the circumstances, Lord, and Lord, all the troubles and Lord, and this young man has his birth, Lord, and the circumstances that surround it. But God, Lord, I pray, Lord, that the power of God would just come and may the cleansing of the blood of Jesus Christ just wash away every... Lord, every impact of that out of his life. And Lord, I pray, God, as he brought him into this family now and as they begin to raise him in the fear and abomination of God. 
Lord, that you would follow him all the days of his life. Oh, God, build a hedge round about him like you did Job, that even Satan couldn't get to him, Lord. And Lord, I pray that at the appointed time when he comes to an age, Lord, that, that you would begin to speak to him and that you would draw him by your voice. And I pray, oh, God, that you would put something in his heart, Lord, to respond to that call. Lord, bless uh, Brother Joel and Sister Robin this morning. I pray, God, that you would give them strength and grace. Lord, may you be with them in every step of this process, God. And, Lord, I pray, God, that you would give them, Lord, Lord, the wisdom and the understanding, Lord, and, Lord, the grace that they would need, Lord, as they have taken on this great responsibility. And, Lord Jesus, we ask these things this God. In the book of Luke, if we could turn there in the book of Luke, in the 17th chapter of Luke, very familiar scripture to us as message believers, and I just think it's a, uh, a powerful scripture. Luke 17 and verse 26. <clears throat> and as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. And likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, and they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained down fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. May God just add his blessings as you're seated this morning. I'd like to um, um, speak to you this morning just for a few minutes. And I know that time is precious, but... Amen. We'd like to um, maybe, by God's help, give you something to take home with you. And amen. I, I'd like to title it the Keystone of the Bible, and I'm going to take that out of a, a quote that uh, the prophet um, had um, had uh, said in the Church Age book. And he said, "In order for you to fully understand the message of the Church Ages, I would like to explain the various principles that allowed me to arrive to the names of the messengers." the length of the ages, and other factors that were involved therein. And since this study was to be um, the most serious one I'd ever undertaken up until this time, I sought God for many days for the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And then only did I read the scriptures on the church ages and into many church histories written by uh, the most unbiased historians that I could find. And God did not fail to answer my prayer. For while I read the word and the histories, I was enabled by the Holy Spirit to see unfolded a pattern that runs through the centuries right into this present last day. And the key that was given me of the Lord, whereby I was able to determine the messengers for each age, is a most scriptural one. In fact, it could be called the keystone of the Bible. It's the revelation that God never changes. And that his ways are just as unchangeable as he is. In Hebrews 13, 8, it says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do you believe that? Ecclesiastes 3, 14. I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. And nothing can be to, to put to it, nor anything taken from it. And God doeth it that men should fear before him. That which is being is now. And that which is to be hath already been. And God requireth that which is past. Here it is, Brother Brown said, the, uh, an unchanging God with unchanging ways. What he did at the first, he'll have to keep on doing until it's done for the last time. There will never be a change. He said you can apply that to the church ages and the kind of man that God would choose for the first age and how that God manifested in that man's ministry. It would be the example for all other ages. What God did in the first church age is what he wants to do in all the other ages. Amen. Now, we know exactly from the word which was recorded by the Holy Spirit how the first or the original church was founded and how that God manifested himself in her. The word cannot change or be changed because the word is God. Amen. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. 
to change one word of it as Eve did brings uh, sin and death. Even as it said in Revelation 22, 18, if a man shall add unto these things, God will add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Thus, what the church was at Pentecost is the standard. That is the pattern. There is no other pattern. No matter what the scholar says, God has not changed that pattern. What God did at Pentecost, he has to keep on doing until the church age is closed. How many believes that's the truth this morning? Amen. So there's only one pattern to the true church, and that is the original church that was founded by God himself. Listen, friends, the way that God started that church and what God did in that church is what God desired to continue to do until the Gentile dispensation come to an end. Is that right? Amen. Listen, friends, and we know, amen, by that pattern that that church, amen, was not started by man and neither was it governed by men, amen, but it was started by the Holy Ghost, amen, then it was governed by the Holy Ghost. Is that right? Amen. Do you believe it this morning? Morning. Amen. And listen, friends, no man started that fire. Amen. God himself started that fire. Is that right? Amen. And, and, and the church, amen, was founded on the pure, unadulterated word of God. Amen. Do you believe that? Amen. And that original church, amen, the Bible says that they, amen, tried them that called themselves apostles and found them to be liars. And Brother Brown said, oh, amen, what, what, what boldness is that? And how that, amen, what right would they have as a congregation to try the, the ministry? He said, but see, it wasn't that they were trying them. Amen. No, he said, it, amen, they were trying them by the word, see. Amen. And they took every ministry, amen, every ministry that they heard they took it back to the word amen and if that minister wasn't saying what the word said amen that brother Brown said they stood there and said amen you are a false amen uh, you're a false anointed one because you're not saying what Paul said listen friends I tell you what amen that's the way the church started and that's the way it's going to end somebody's going to rise up in this day amen and somebody's going to ta start taking every ministry amen everything you hear amen everything you feel. Take it back to the word of God. And I say this without apology this morning. If they're not saying what William Branham said, they're false anointed ones in the end time. I don't care how anointed they are. I don't care how good it sounds. If it don't line up with the word of God, if it don't line up with the message of the hour, amen, it is false. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's the keystone of the Bible. Now, as we think about this, amen, what is the keystone? It is is the revelation that God never changes. Numbers 23 and 19, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Amen. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and it shall not make it good? Amen. Malachi 3 and 6, for I am the Lord, and I change not. Amen. In the book of Psalms, in Psalms 102, of old hast thou laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hands. They shall perish, but thou shalt endure. Yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment, and as a vesture thou shalt change them, but and they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and thy years shall have no end. Amen. Listen, friends, that's the God that we're serving this morning. Amen. God is unchangeable. Listen, it is not that God, it's not that we're saying this morning that God has never changed as if he could. You see what I'm saying? You can say something, that, amen, you know, it's just always been the same. It's never changed. But, but that's, uh, that's different than something being immutable because, amen, uh, immutable is something that cannot be changed. See, and that's God. God, it, it, it's not just that the, the fact that he's never changed. Amen. But the fact is, he cannot change. And he cannot be changed. Amen. Brother Aaron would say it this way. He said, I thank you, Father, that you remain the same God that you ever was. You're still just the same. We change. Ages change. Ch time change. People change. But you never change. Your systems are the same. Your grace is the same. Your works are the same. 
because they are marvelous and, and your ways are past any knowledge of a man to ever understand. Amen. In the evening messenger, he said, now notice you people all must remember this, that God cannot change. He's an unchangeable God. See, times change, people change, but God is infinite. He cannot change. He must remain the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. He must always remain. And if you believe this to be the word of God, we can put our confidence. Amen. We can put our confidence. Amen. How many believe this? But that's why we can put our confidence in God because he can't change. Now you see, amen, there's how his message comes. He sends his message. He can't change that. He's always done it. He always has to remain the same. And that's the way that he'll always do it. Now, you see what Brother Ram is saying? The way he did it is the way he'll always do it. Do you realize that's how we know that if God's going to send a message in this last day, he's going to use a prophet? Amen. Because listen, friends, it's got to line up with the pattern of the scripture. Amen. God don't do nothing unless he reveals it to, amen, to his prophets first. Is that right? So if God was going to, amen, give a message in this last day, he would have to use a prophet because that, amen, is his unchanging method. Hallelujah. Amen. He says in the identified Christ of all the ages, he said the unchangeable God with an unchangeable character and his unchangeable characteristics must remain the same. He cannot change his characteristic. He cannot do it. Anything is known by his characteristics. God is known by his characteristic, right? Amen. In the mighty God unveiled, Brother Ram said in God, what he does, he just, he just changes himself to become that or, 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 or to become to that generation to make himself known to that people. Now, listen what, how he said he changes himself, but he's not changing his nature. He's not changing his characteristics. He's changing his mask. See? Amen. And he's doing it for the purpose to make himself known to that people. And that's what we're here to find out tonight is what the way is God is supposed to make himself known to the people. Amen. In this time, see, he changes his mask. He changes his act, but he don't change his disposition. He doesn't change his nature. He just changes his mask from one to another. He does it, amen, to reveal himself more plain to the people that they might know who he is and what he is. I think this is beautiful because you got to catch this revelation. This is, in fact, the keystone of the Bible. And when you begin to realize that God is made known by his characteristics, then you'll be able to see God no matter what form he appears in. See, it don't matter what body God is using. You can know if it's God or not by the characteristics. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Amen. Listen, friends. Amen. Whether it's in a pillar of fire or was in the man Jesus, it was the same characteristics. Amen. And whether it was in the man Jesus or in the man William Branham, it was the same characteristics. And whether it was in, I hope you can follow me in this, whether it was in William Branham or in you, it's the same characteristics. Hallelujah. Amen. Because God is made known by his characteristics. It's by his nature. You believe it. Amen. It, it, it's the keystone revelation of the Bible. God don't never change. See, and that's how you'll know if it's God. So Brother Ram would say, in the, in, the, in the message souls in prison he said Jesus said as the father sent me so send I you and as the father sent him to preach to the living to those who had hope and then presented the same message to those who had no hope it seems fitting at this time that it will have to be done because the spirit of Christ living in us the spirit of Christ living in us does not change the nature of him or it doesn't change God's system. He must be the same in every generation. He must be the same. As the Father sent me, so send I you. Amen. I, I think that's a beautiful quote. He must be the same in every generation. Listen, friends, this is a different generation, and these are different times. 
you're living in a different world, amen, than even what Brother Branham lived in. But there's something that has remained, and that's the characteristics of God, the nature of God. And whether, amen, it was in that generation or this generation, it don't change God's nature or his characteristics. Amen. You say, Brother Josh, what are you trying to say? I'm trying to tell you this. Whatever the Holy Ghost done in Paul and Peter and James and John... If it's the same Holy Ghost, it'll do the same thing in you that it did in them. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm glad to be able to tell you this morning. I got the same Holy Ghost that Peter, James, and John got. I got the same Holy Ghost in me that William Branham had. And brother, whatever it did in them, it'll do the same thing in me. Amen. And i tell you what it did in them. Just a shadow of them apostles. Amen. As it covered over the sick, they were healed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do you believe it? And listen, friends, you ain't got a different Holy Ghost. You got the same Holy Ghost doing the same thing. If it changed them, it'll change you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, you believe it. So now watch. <clears throat> he said, and the kinsman redeemer, he said, them Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do you believe that with all your heart? How many of you believe that with all your heart? Amen. He is the same. Do you believe that Jesus Christ being the same yesterday, today, and forever, that means that he's actually the same? How is he the same? He's the same in every principle. He's the same God, the same healer, the same Savior. He's got the same attitude. Hallelujah. That's all the same. Is it right? Amen. Then if he it was the same and is the same, he'll do and act the same. How many knows that to be the truth? Because he's immutable, see. He's unchangeable. Immutable means something that cannot be transposed it's something that's fixed it's, uh, it, it can't be altered it cannot be changed it's unchanging over time it's unable to be changed that's why in Hebrews 6 we were there the other night Amen. That, that the Bible says for when God made promise to Abraham because he could swear by no greater he swore by himself Listen, friends, what, what, what's that scripture really talking about? Because men, you know, when they make a promise because we are men and we're human, amen, then, then we actually have the ability to, to, to promise something and then fail to carry it out, see. Amen. Men have the ability to, to, even with good intentions sometimes, you may give a promise, but then you are unable to keep your promise. Amen. And, and so, amen, that's why men will swear an oath by something greater than what they are. Amen. Because they're trying to give a confidence, amen, uh, uh, or a confirmation behind the promise that they made. Amen. That's why they're swearing to something greater or by something greater than what they are. See, amen, I might fail, but that can't fail. I might fail, but that's why they have men lay their hands on the Bible in the court of law because they know a man can lie. Amen. But they used to have an, uh, an understanding that this can't lie. So they made them swear by something greater than what they were. Amen. That there might be a confidence in what they were saying. But when God got ready to make an oath with Abraham, he looked all over the earth. Amen. He looked and searched for something greater that he could swear by. But because there was nothing greater, he swore by himself. Hallelujah. You know what that tells me, friends? That the promise of God is just as sure as the nature of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And his word is just as unchangeable as he is. I ask you the question, is, can God fail? Neither can his word. <laughs> Now look, because Brother Brown said, I feel religious. Oh, I, feel, I feel it too. <laughs> he said, I feel religious when I think about Abraham, knowing that, what he, uh, that, that we can be his seed. Let me believe you're Abraham's seed through Christ. And all these promises, not only to make it sure God held up his hand and swore by himself, 
that he would do it. The oath always, the covenant is confirmed by an oath. And God swore by himself because there was no hire to swear by. He swore by himself that he would do it. And now, what the world, how, what's the matter with us? Such a promise as that, a faith built around something like that, a faith, a word that promised these things in the last days, and here we see it happening right before us, and we're still stooping around and calling ourselves Abraham's seed. What's Brother Brown saying? Amen. Listen, friends. Amen. We're not just following just a, 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 a better idea. Come on, friends. Amen. We got a more sure word of prophecy in this hour. Amen. And God has not only promised his word, but he's also confirmed it by an oath and proved it to be, to be true. Amen. And the prophet of God said, with well, a faith anchored on a word like that, how can we ever fail? Amen. How? Amen. It would be a sin for us to doubt the word of God at this time. At least it is because God not only said it, but he confirmed it and he's proved it to be true in this day. Is what the, what is the Bible going to say? For men verily swear by the greater, for an oath of confirmation is to them the end of all strife. You know what that means? It's the 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 dispute is over. It's the end of the argument. Hey, but I, I I feel like stopping right here for a minute and just tell the devil stuff. The dispute is over. We are not here disputing whether the message is right or can we trust it or we can't trust it. The, 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 we're not here to argue that point this morning. The dispute is over. The strife has ended because God has confirmed his word. Amen. And listen, friends, amen, it has been, amen, God has promised, amen, and made an oath with us and proved it to be exactly the truth. And that confirmation is the end of the strife. Watch, we're in God more willing are willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of the promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath, by two immutable things or unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie. How many is thankful for that? Amen. Listen, friends, God cannot lie. He meant two immutable things. What is these things? The promise and the oath. It's unchangeable. Amen. It's impossible for God to lie. Amen. That should give us an absolute assurance. Amen. And listen, friends. Amen. About the reliability of God's word and his promise. Friends, if God said he's going to do something, he's going to do it. And God said, I'm going to have a bride. And she's going to be without spot without wrinkle hallelujah I'm going to have a virgin bride a virgin of my word I'm going to have a church in the end time hallelujah that's going to be a holy ghost filled church amen that's going to be clothed in the beauty of holiness amen I'm going to have overcomers amen God has said it and God will do it you say brother I'm having a hard time seeing it well I'll just tell you God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham Hallelujah. He's still Jehovah Jireh. Where there ain't no squirrels. He can create squirrels. Do you believe it? Amen. Listen, friends, and I tell you this. Amen. There's a lot of people coming. They've gone. Amen. But God said, I'm going to have a bride. Somebody's going to believe the message. Amen. And if they won't do it, I'll raise up a bunch of young people in 2024. Amen. And I'll put a faith in their heart. Hallelujah. Amen. Men have took and they've debated the message and they made weapons out of it and they divided and built kingdoms. Amen. But God said, I'm going to have a bride. I don't care how bad it gets or how bad it looks. Somebody is going to believe that message. And I believe I'm looking at some young people. Hallelujah. Listen, friends. Amen. And we, amen. Listen, we ain't circling the mountain no more. Like Brother Andrew preached last night. We're going over. We're all the promises of God are a reality. Hallelujah. 
God is obligated to his word. He's obligated. God keeps his word. Did you know that? Brother Brown said, he said, if you ever get that settled in a man, you're going to go somewhere. He said, most of you get that. He said, let that drop down in here and let, it, let this down here say it's right. And then I don't care what anything says different. It'll never change your course. He said, oh, you're heading out in the deep water then. Listen to what he says. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. He said, let's watch the manifestation. As soon as he started his public ministry, watch what Brother Brown was saying. If you can follow, he's talking about Christ, his public ministry, and see, and see what he did yesterday, he will be the same today. You believe that? If we find out what he done yesterday to manifest himself as a Messiah, oh, you say... Uh, 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 you may, may I say that again? Amen. He said, for here hangs the campaign. There hangs the keynote. There hangs the thing that will shake the nation. There hangs the one all-sufficient thing. What he was, he is. Hallelujah. There hangs the keynote. He called it the keystone revelation. Now he says the keynote to the campaign. Amen. There hangs the thing that will shake the nation. Amen. And then what, the, what did the prophet say? What he was, he is. You say, brother, what do you mean by that? I'm telling you, if he was a savior, he is a savior. If he was a deliverer, he is a deliverer. If he was a healer, he is a healer. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. I got something to encourage you with this morning. If he did it for one, and he is just. The prophet of God said, if you meet the same requirements, then God is obligated to do for you what he did for them. Oh, come on, church. I tell you what you need to do this morning. Amen. Get your Bible out and find somebody in this Bible that you can identify with. And then you look. Amen. You look over there and you read about Shemgar. And you said, oh, God, if you did it for him and if you're the same God this morning, you got to do it for me. Hallelujah. Read about Samson. Amen. And you say, oh, God, if you did it for him, you got to do it for me. Read about David. And if you did it for him, you got to do it for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because whatever he was, he is. We ain't serving the God of the I was or the God of I will be. He's the God of the I am. <laughs> Hallelujah. You believe it. And the prophet of God said, if he is the same, and how many can say amen he is, amen. then we should sell out and surrender everything to him. All our motives, all our object, uh, objectives, amen, our will, amen, that we should surrender to him. Do you believe that? Now as we just turn a little bit of a corner now, amen, the prophet said all scripture has compound meanings and it runs in cycles. For instance, he said over there in Matthew, I believe it was out of Egypt, I call my son. And now the scripture that Matthew was referring to really was pertaining to Israel. And God said, out of Egypt, I'll call my son Israel. And he called Israel his son out. But it also meant Jesus. <laughs> See, out of, out of Egypt, I'll call my son. See how it routines back? The cycle of time swings it back ever so often. And history repeats itself. And scripture repeats itself down through the age. Any scholar knows that that's ever studied it from the scriptural standpoint to watch how that scripture will repeat itself. It runs in cycles like that. It certainly does. Another place, what shall I do with this Jesus called Christ? Brother Brown said, you see, nature in history repeats itself because nature continues the same. Trees will continue to grow. Vegetables will come. Flowers, uh, uh, the world turns just like it always did. It's nature, see. And the nature of each age produces again and reproduces the reflection 
of what a nature was before them. And today we find ourselves again standing on that same place. So now Brother Bram is saying that the nature of the age will run in a cycle. And he said you'll find yourself because uh, history repeats itself. Nature repeats itself. And he said even the scriptures see. Amen. The, 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 The prophecy Will, will, will come around in another cycle. And he said, and you'll find yourself standing again. So in other words, what's he trying to show you? He's trying to show you that that's why you can go back in the Bible. Amen. And God laid things in this Bible that would be a type of where you're standing at now. And then by that, whatever God did then... You can expect God to do the same thing now. Watch this. It's powerful. Because Brother Branham says, he takes and he began to tell us, how many knows that God would use the spirit of Elijah five times? Now, how do we know it's Elijah's ministry? By the characteristics of it. I think this is very powerful things that Brother Brown amen, even uses this same keystone revelation to identify the two witnesses of Revelation 11. He identified who they were by their characteristics of their ministry. Even, you know, Brother Brown said it had to be Moses and Elijah because look what they done. Amen. They interrupted nature, turned the water into blood, and amen, uh, 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 shut up the heavens. He said, who did that before? So he took the characteristic of the ministry, amen, and identified, amen, the the ministry of the end time because of what they had already done. Oh, friends, I hope you understand when I say, do you know it was the same way that Brother Branham was able to identify the souls under the altar? He said they couldn't be bright. He said, because look what they're doing. They're crying out for vengeance. He said, that can't be bride. Amen, because the bride would have the same spirit in them that Christ had in him when he was hanging on the cross. And he said, Father, forgive. And then he proved it. Amen, because when they were stoning Stephen, because he had the same Holy Ghost, the light that was in Christ was now in Stephen. He said, oh, Father, forgive them. And Brother Brown said, the bride will have that same forgiveness. Come on, young people. I'm giving you a keystone to identify every ministry, every church. You can identify the bride of Jesus Christ by the characteristics. I tell you what, if there's hatred, amen, and malice, amen, and all kind of mean spirit coming out, that is not the spirit of Christ. Identified by the characteristic. Brother Bram said, That's a, see them souls under the altar and the fist seal, that's them Jews. Because they, 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 listen, they stood for the testimony of the word of God, but not of Jesus Christ. And they're crying out for it. So by that same, I think it's so beautiful because it was by that 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 uh, keystone revelation that he identified. The messenger of of the ages. You know what Brother Brown said? He did it because whichever one was the closest to having the same uh, uh, quality in their ministry that was in the Apostle Paul's. That was a messenger to the age. Is that right? So watch this because that's how we can identify the ministry of Elijah. I'm just kidding. I'm going to tell you. Amen. I, I come to these meetings to, amen, to, to, to cut the devil up. So because the devils are coming along now and trying to, amen, trying to tell some of our young people and even some of our old people that William Branham was not the Elijah that was promised in Malachi 4. And they're trying to come and discredit and, uh, discredit and tear down the ministry of William Branham and say, oh, it could not be. He could not be that fulfillment. But I tell you what I've done. Amen. I've checked it by the characteristics. And the problem is, is I already got three examples in this Bible of what the ministry of Elijah would do. Come on, church. I tell you what, when Elijah come, he stood there and withstood that Jezebel religion. Hallelujah. 
He wasn't a jellyfish. Weak back Christian. He stood right there in the face of all adversity and withstood that Jezebel religion. And I say this, William Branham, amen, did exactly the same thing. And the second time God used the ministry of Elijah was in Elisha. And Elisha was a man that was conscious of two dimensions. Amen. He could stand in this world and be conscious of two dimensions and tell you what you couldn't see in another dimension. I checked the ministry of William Branham by the example laying in the scripture. And I tell you by the characteristics of his ministry, I declare to you, amen, he is the end time Elijah of Malachi 4. Come on, friends. What do you say about John the Baptist? John the Baptist was a man of the wilderness, come stoking out of the winters, even uh, eating locusts and wild honey. And he walked right up to Herod and said, it ain't lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Come on, friends. He didn't back down on nothing. Amen. He didn't, he didn't come to tickle their ears. He said, the axe is laid to the root of the tree. Amen. And what did he do? He went as a forerunner. Forerunning the very coming of the Lord. But I want to tell you, there was a voice down on the old high river that spoke one day and said, as John the Baptist was sent to forerun the first coming of Christ, so will your message forerun the second. Listen, friends, I checked it by the, the characteristics of it. And the ministry matches. I tell that devil this morning, you come too late, tell me that William Brennan was not the Elijah of Malachi 4. But brother, I want to tell you this. Amen. If there's an Elijah, there's got to be somebody that their heart is going to be turned by that message. Oh, I want to preach right now. Amen. I ain't got the voice to do it, but I want to tell you, if there's a Jezebel, and there is, and there's an Ahab, and there is, amen, if there's a Jezebel, there's got to be an Elijah. But, brother, if there's an Elijah, there's got to be 7,000 somewhere that's never bowed the knee to Baal. There's got to be somebody that's got their name on the last book of life before the foundation of the world. If there's an Elijah, there's got to be somebody that's going to stand with that Elijah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I tell you what, I believe I'm looking at some of them that will not bend. We will not bow. And when the showdown comes and the fire falls, amen, we say, the Lord, he is God. You believe it? You know, Brother Bram, in the Feast of the Trumpets, Brother Bram was talking about them two witnesses. And he said, I caught that. See? He said, he said, you think it was Enoch? He said, because he, see, Elijah had never was taken into heaven in a chair. He said, you think it was Enoch because he never died. He said, but he said, but no, he said it had to be Moses. And he said, I'll prove it to you. <laughs> and then he shows Moses and Elijah standing on Mount Transfiguration. <laughs> and listen, friends, even though Moses had died, amen, amen, the air, and the angels had carried him away. But listen, friends, amen, remember, Brother Brown shows it very powerful. He said, when Moses got ready to die, Amen. He had a place to put his foot. And when he stepped from this dimension, he just stepped over onto the rock. Hallelujah. Amen. And there, because he died like that, amen, he was seen again on Mount Transfiguration. 
amen, standing there with Christ in the presence of Peter, James, and John. Amen. And Brother Brown says, see, amen, it proves it. He said, it can't be Enoch that would break the pattern. Now, Brother Brown, remember, Brother Branham said, said that, that that early church would be the pattern or the example. Paul's ministry would be the example. Brother Branham said Paul founded the church at Ephesus. In about the middle of the first century, he said this enables uh, us to set the date of the beginning of the Ephesian church age. He said his manner of ministering set the pattern that all future messengers were to aspire to. And actually set the pattern for every true minister of God. Though he would not obtain such heights in the prophetic realm as did Paul, Paul's ministry had a threefold quality and was as follows. First of all, first of all, Paul was absolutely true to the word. He never deviated from it no matter the cost. Listen, friends, Brother Brown said every true minister will aspire to, 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 to strive, amen, to have these same qualities in their ministry. It ain't that they're trying to be like Paul or, you know, mimic him in, 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 their, in, their, in charisma or in action or so forth, amen, but they'll have the same quality of ministry that was in the Apostle Paul. And then he breaks it down in threefold. He said, first of all, he'd be true to the word. Secondly, his ministry was in the power of the Spirit, thereby demonstrating the spoken and written word. Is that right? Paul said, I didn't come with enticing words of men's wisdom, but in the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Paul, amen, believed, amen, that when the word is preached, amen, it would demonstrate. Amen. How many believe that? Amen. Listen, friends. Amen. And thirdly, amen, Paul's ministry would have evident fruit of a God-given ministry. In other words, amen, somebody when Paul preached, amen, there was going to be souls won to Christ. Amen. There was going to be fruits of his ministry. Come on, church. I'm telling you. Amen. I'm giving you young people a key. Amen. That you can identify between the true and the false. Amen. First of all, first and foremost, amen, I don't care what's going on or what's happening or what or how anointed anybody is. If they're not staying true to the word. That is the first quality. Amen. That, 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 that Brother Branham put to Paul's ministry. Amen. They, that he stood true to the word. I mean, he knows that even our prophet, amen, when he went beyond the curtain of time, amen, he stood there and he asked, amen, will Paul have to stand with his group? said, yes. He said, praise God, because I preached what Paul preached. Hallelujah. And there was a multitude of people that began to scream out, we're resting on that. Hallelujah. You may call me crazy, but I believe I was one of them. Amen. And because I was one of them, I'm here this morning, and I'm still resting on this message. I'll tell you why. Amen. Because I've checked it with a pattern. Brother, amen. I'll tell you this message lines up from Genesis all the way to Revelations. You know what? Somebody asked me one time. They come and said, well, brother, brother Josh, don't you think, don't you think it's possible, you know, that somebody could uh, 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 you know that we could that we could preach these things and and, and let's you know and, and just leave Brother Branham out of it. I mean, you know. And I was listening to him for a little bit. You know, I was thinking, you know, that, well, we just put too much emphasis, you know, on the problem. We just and don't you think we could just preach the revelation? And just you know, we ain't got to talk about the prophet and just leave Brother Branham out of it. And for a minute, you know, Brother Ray, I was thinking about that. I thought, well, you know, uh, maybe, uh, I don't know. And all of a sudden, something just struck my heart. I said, I'll tell you what. I believe as soon as you can tell the story about the ark and leave Noah out of it. And if you can talk about Israel coming out of Egypt and an exodus and leave Moses out of it. Come on, church, if you can talk about the early church and leave Paul out of it, then you can talk about this end time message and the change of my body 
and leave Brother Branham out of it. But brother, if you're going to put Noah in the story and Moses in the story and Paul in the story, then why not just put Brother Branham in it too? Brother, I'm telling you, amen, we're not here to worship William Branham. We worship Jesus Christ. But William Branham was a part, a channel, amen, that God used. Hallelujah. That's how we know that Malachi 4 is not a, an anointing that's going to come on a group. You know how we know? Because that's not what he done the first three times. And God don't change his pattern. Brother Graham said, I want you to be very careful here and see this. God has promised that at the end time, Malachi 4 is going to be fulfilled. It has to be, for it's the spirit quickened word of God spoken by the prophet Malachi. Jesus referred to it. It's just before Christ comes a second time. By the time Jesus comes, all scripture must be fulfilled. The Gentile dispensation will be done, or, 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 or will be in its last church age when the messenger of Malachi comes. He will be right with the word. He will take the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelations. He'll start at the serpent sea and carry on to the messenger of the latter rain. Amen. He will be rejected by the denominations. He has to be because, because it's history repeating itself. Amen. It's history repeating itself from the time of Ahab. It's Israel's history under Ahab, Ahab happening right here in America where the prophet of Malachi appears as Israel left Egypt to worship in freedom, pushed out the natives, raised up a nation with great leaders like David, etc. And then they put an Ahab on the throne with a Jezebel behind him to direct. So have we done the very same in America. Our forefathers left for this land to worship in and to live in freedom. They pushed back the natives. They took over the land. Mighty men like Washington and Lincoln raised up. But after a while other men of such poor caliber succeeded those worthy men and soon an Ahab was set in a presidential chair with a Jezebel behind him to direct him it is at such a time that Mount, that the Mount Carmel showdown amen will come and watch this carefully now to see in the word John was the forerunner of Malachi 3 he planted the former he planted the, uh, 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 the former reign and was rejected by the organization of his, of, of his day Jesus came and had a Mount Transfiguration showdown. Amen. The second forerunner of Christ will sow for the latter reign. And Jesus will be the showdown between the denominations and the creed. For he will come to back up his word and to take his bride in a rapture. Hallelujah. The first showdown was Mount Carmel. The second showdown was Mount Transfiguration. The third will be Mount Zion. Listen, friends, we are coming to the Mount Zion showdown. Amen. And the showdown is this. The proof of it at this time. Listen, friends, on Mount, Tra on Mount Carmel, the fire fell. On Mount Transfiguration, amen, he said, this is my beloved son. Hear ye him. Amen. But on the Mount Zion showdown, Jesus is going to come and take his bride in the rapture. Come on, friends, I want to tell you something. There's going to be a final proof of this message one of these mornings, and it's going to be, amen, not what I'm doing on the earth. I'm not even going to be here. Hallelujah. Amen. And this God is going to prove the difference between his bride and the, and the church. Amen. And the final proof is going to be the change of our bodies. You believe that? Now look, I've laid all this out and showed you because I want you to catch this. As it was, so shall it be. As it was in the days of Sodom. Now Jesus in, 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 in Luke 17, he says, as it was in the days of Lot. I've always thought this was a, a powerful because Jesus don't say anything about Abraham. But he says, as it was in the days of Lot. And then he'll start de uh, describing the condition of the world at that time. So as it was in the days of Lot. And then he'll describe the, uh, what was going on in Sodom. Amen. Uh, uh, but he don't say nothing about Abraham. And then he'll go and say, as it was in the days of Noah. 
Amen. And they were, uh, you know, uh, uh, given in marriage and so forth. And all the conditions of the world, amen, at that time, so shall it be. So as it was, so shall it be. But listen, friends, amen, I thank God for a message. Because Brother Brown comes along and picks up them same scriptures. Amen. And, and, and tell you where Jesus said, as it was in the days of Lot. But friends, you've got to take it and look at the pattern. Look at the, remember what was, will be, and what is has already been. Amen. So you go back and you find your day in the scripture. And Jesus said, when the Son of Man is going to be revealed, it's going to be as it was in the days of Lot. Amen. So if there's a Sodom, how many believe you're living in Sodom? Come on, friends. We are not, that's not something down the road. We're living in the days of Sodom. The world is in a Sodom condition. That's not coming next week or, amen. Let's, no, that's where we're at right now. But if there's a Sodom, there's got to be a lot. And the Bible said the sins of the city vexed his righteous soul. I mean, that's what the Bible says. But you know, Lot ain't even your type. Lot is not even your type. Amen. But I want to tell you this. If there's a Sodom and there's a Lot, there's got to be an Abraham. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, if there's a Sodom and there's a Lot, there's got to be two angels that was sent down to administer to Lot and blind the eyes of the people to the door. Amen, listen. But if there is a Lot and there's two angels with him, there's got to be an Abraham somewhere <laughs> under another ministry. God made flesh, revealing the secret of the heart. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, church, I want to tell you, amen, if there's a Lot's wife that is turning around and looking back, just in a time right before the judgment. Amen. There's a lot's wife that's looking back. There's got to be a Sarah somewhere that's judging him faithful who made the promise. Hallelujah. I don't know about the rest of y'all, but when I read that story, I am not Lot. I am not a Lot's wife. Come on. I'm not down in Sodom. I'm sitting on another mountain. Hallelujah. I'm fellowshipping with Elohim. And while Lot's wife is turning to a pillar of salt, Sarah's body is being changed to receive the promised son. Hallelujah. Listen, friends. Amen. As it was in the days of Noah. Amen. If there's, a, if there's a time on the earth that men's heart are continually upon evil. How many believe we're living there? How, how, many, how many believe that's this day right now? Amen. But listen, if the world is in that condition. Amen. And there's a Noah. Amen. But listen, friends, there's got to be an Enoch. Come on. Brother Branham took the pattern. And he said, Enoch would not be one of them uh, uh, two prophets of Revelations 11. It don't fit the pattern. But the same prophet took the same pattern and said, Enoch does have a type. He is not typing one of them two witnesses. He's typing a bride that was the seven from Adam. Amen. That was going to go in a rapture before the tribulation. Hallelujah. Listen, friends. Amen. If there's a Noah, there's got to be an Enoch. If there's a church that's going to go through the tribulation, there's got to be a bride somewhere that's going in a rapture. You believe it? If there's an Eliezer. If there's an Eliezer, I'm telling you, what was will be and what is has already been. And if there's an Eliezer, there's got to be a Rebecca. You can't have an Eliezer without a Rebecca. Come on, church. You can't have, amen, an end-time prophet with an end-time message without having a bride to believe, to believe and receive that message. There's got to be a Rebecca somewhere that's coming to the well. 
Hallelujah. Amen. There's got to be a Rebecca somewhere that's watering. Amen. With her praise, the very power that's going to carry her to meet Isaac. Well, I know they're going to criticize and they're going to make fun, amen, of all the worship that's going on in this camp. But I'll just take the pattern of the Word of God, amen, and I will show it to you in the Bible what you're actually doing. You're a Rebecca that's drawing water. And you're watering the very power that's going to carry you to meet Isaac. Hallelujah. So I say, don't let no devil take your praise away. Don't let no devil take your joy away. Water the camel. Friends, I could preach all day, but I ain't going to. But I'll tell you what I could. Because you go back all through this Bible. Amen. And you're going to look at the, at the pattern. Amen. And you're going to see. Amen. That, amen. In every example, God puts you in the story. If there's a Boaz, there's got to be a Ruth. Come on, friends. If there's a Jericho, there's got to be a Rahab. Amen. Oh, friends. Amen. There's got to be an Esther somewhere. Amen. God was writing your story. If there's a Judah, there's got to be a Tamar. Amen. God was putting it all down through the scripture. Amen. Listen, there's got to be a Mary somewhere. And said, be it unto me according to thy word. Amen. And the prophet of God said, I'll tell you what to do. Go back in the Bible. And find yourself in this scripture. Let me just try to close with this. I'm going to actually read the quote to you. But Brother Brown said, I imagine that, that this dear person that asked this question, brother, they had asked Brother Brown why the, that the Bible doesn't call, didn't call his name, the, the name William Brown, see. He said, see, he said, now you see, Familiar places that refer to it in the Bible they, that says certain things. Now, if you'll watch, history repeats itself in the Bible. Now, let's just give you a scripture for one now. And he goes into uh, Matthew 3 again, and God calling his son out of Egypt. And then he says, now if you've got a Schofield or a, a reference Bible, you'll follow that reference there in the margin. It'll bring you back when he called Jacob or Israel out of Egypt. As Jacob was his son that would be caught out of Egypt, but Jesus was a son that would be caught out. So the word of God is never ending. See, we identify ourselves in the Bible. How many remembers my message of identifying yourself with the Christian characters? And Brother Brown said, see, I preached it there in Phoenix. He said, many of you has got the tape on it, identifying with Christian character. You see, you identify yourself anywhere you want to in the scripture if you're a Christian. And if you're not a scripture, then you identify yourself in the Bible, see. So I think maybe that would help. And I, he, he, so, so Brother Brown, what is he trying to say? Listen, because they say, you know, Brother Brown, why is your name not called? You know, and, 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 and it's, you know, I actually had somebody ask me that same question one day. He said, well, well, you know, if this message is what you, you, you claim, then why didn't I know anything about it? And furthermore, why is Brother Brown's name not in the Bible? And I said, it is. His name's all through this Bible. And so is mine. Come on, friends. So is mine. And I want you to leave this, this, this youth meeting, amen, with that revelation in your heart. So is mine. Amen. I not only see William Branham's name in that scripture, I see my name. I'm identified under that messenger. I'm identified with that message. I tell you, I'll give, a, I'll give you a great example of this in closing. Amen. Because there was a little woman over in Memphis one day. Amen. She had a son that got sick. God would give her that boy. Amen. And, and, and when her son was on, on the, the, the deathbed, amen, she began to pray. And you know what she did? And Brother Ray, she went back in this Bible and she began to read. And she found herself in the scripture. And she began to say, Lord, I'm that shooting my woman. 
I'm that shoot of my woman, Lord. You gave me this son. Amen. I am that shoot of my woman. Where is your Elijah? Hallelujah. She found herself in the Word of God. And she, and she knew if God is an unchanging God with unchanging ways, and He is a just God, and He is a faithful God, amen, whatever He done for her, He's got to do the same thing for me. And if, if you gave me a son, and I'm that suit of my woman, there's got to be an Elijah somewhere. Hallelujah. And God Almighty took the faith of that woman and grounded an airplane and led a prophet of God right to her house. Hallelujah. And I'm going to tell you something. You say, but Brother Josh, that was a long time ago. And Brother Brenham's not here. Well, I'll tell you this. Amen. Get your Bible out this morning and start reading and find you a character in this Bible. Hallelujah. And i tell you this. If God is still God, and He is, whatever He did then, He'll do now. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe it with all my heart what he did for that woman in Memphis. He'll do the same thing for you. He'll do the same thing for me if you can identify yourself in the Word of God. It's the keystone of the Bible. God never changes. Hallelujah. And his Word is just as true as he is. And my soul is anchored to that word. Hallelujah. I'll tell you something, young people, as the musicians come this morning. Amen. I want you to lead this camp. Amen. And I want you to have this anchored in your heart. That, and, and, and please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Amen. Because I thank God for the excitement. And I thank God for the worship and everything that's happened here. But friends, when all that is gone... And the waves start battering up against that ship. And I'm going to tell you, you're going to leave this camp and you're going to be rolling against the current. You're going to leave this camp and you're going to go back out and, and in your lives and, the, and, and things are going to become normal again. And you're going to be pushing against the current and, and Satan's going to be fighting you. And the waves are going to be crashing around you. But I tell you what, that's when you need strong consolation. Amen. That Paul talked about in Hebrews 6. The strong consolation that by two immutable things, God cannot lie. Which hope we have is an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. And I'll tell you this. You know, when you're going against the current, you ain't got to... You ain't got to row backwards to go backwards. <laughs> Just quit. Just stop. See, because the current will take you backwards. When you're going up against the current, see, all you, and, and listen, you're going to get tired sometimes. You get wore out. The winds are going to get strong and the sails are going to break. Maybe even the oars are going to snap. That's when you got to have an anchor. And I'm telling you this morning, amen, when that current starts pulling you back, drop that anchor. And say, Lord, I've come too far. I fought too hard. I've come too hard to drift away now. And drop that anchor. That anchor within the veil. Let it just catch on that rock, that solid rock. Tie your soul to Christ. Brother Brown said it don't matter what comes or what goes. I'm tied to him. Don't matter what they say. It don't matter what the critics may rise and, the, and all the things. But listen, I'm tied to something. Listen, friends, it ain't me holding on to him. Brother Graham said, the ship ain't holding on to the anchor. But the anchor is holding the ship. It ain't you holding on to him. There's something got a hold of you this morning. It's an unchanging God. With unchanging ways.
God bless you in Jesus' name. I'm happy. Oh, I've accepted the word of the Lord, the revealed word that was spoken by the prophet.
like the Lord in all the earth. There's nobody like him, is there? Matchless love and beauty in this world. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Oh, my Jesus, you're the cup that won't dry. Treasure of my heart, treasure of my heart and of my soul. My weakness, you are merciful. For the Redeemer of my past and present, wrong. Holder of my future days to come, your presence is here. Oh 
days for Elijah before the glory of the Lord. And these are the days of the seven angels revealing the coming of the Lord. Oh, and these are the days of the midnight call. Oh, behold, the bridegroom he comes. Oh, and we are the voice of the final. faster now in the days of the seventh angel Amen. and in the days of the bride how many is in the day of the bride <laughs> how many is in the bride age yes. glory oh behold he comes riding on the clouds shining like the sun Jehovah, there's no God like Jehovah. Play it. Play that drum. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's 
no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah.
now, but shout glory. Hey man, what a tremendous meeting this weekend and what a tremendous time. We thank God for his mercy. Amen. For the powerful sermons we've heard, for the word of God that has come forward in this age. Amen. What a, what a blessing. Amen. To have so many hearts open today to receive of his word. And, amen. And uh, we not going to take time to thank each one individually, but I, I want to say from the bottom of our heart, we thank every person that's been involved in the camp and all the visitors that have came in and thrown their shoulder to the wheel and been a part of the team and the staff and the deacons and every every area. And we so thank you. Amen. We have a host of pastors that have come this weekend, and we want to thank them. Amen. Some of them not here this morning, but thank them. Amen. Uh, I, I know that maybe uh, through the years back there was some of the meetings, some of the camp meetings that didn't want pastors to attend. We want the pastors to attend. And if they got young people here, we want them to come with them and be a part of the meetings. And, and uh, amen, because what we're wanting to see is an upward movement of the power of God for all the young people and, 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 and the elders alike. And amen, I uh, was sitting there listening to Josh preach this morning and I was, I was sitting there thinking he... He was coming across that when the uh, the ending of all strife, and I could hear the prophet saying that the seven seal ends all things. Amen. It ends all the strife. It ends all the doubting. It it just ends it. Isn't it? Isn't it something, young people, that the seventh seal has been revealed in every type in the Bible. Amen. And it's come to you in story form that you might be able to catch it when it was hid from the wise and prudent. Amen. But yet it was revealed to you, such as you said, well, my, my name, Brother Wayne, it ain't there. But you know, it is there. Amen. amen. It is there. How many knows the scripture where it says, amen, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of testimony. Y'all know what pronouns mean? I know. They. Who is they? Isn't it beautiful? He didn't put one name there. He gave they so you could be added into that group. And they. That same group is in Hebrews, the 11th chapter, when the Bible said that they, speaking of the former ages, cannot be made perfect without us speaking of this same group. But you said, Brother Wayne, then it's just a group experience. But in Revelations 3, it said, he that overcometh. And it takes it to a personal. So here this morning, personally, you're in the scriptures. And once you see that, it is the end of the strife. 
because it's not just something that the story was told. It's a life that is living today. We do want to take a, a special moment to just say that we appreciate Brother Nathan, Brother Ronnie, for their work in this camp. <laughs> Amen. God bless you, Brother Nathan. God bless you, Brother Ronnie. Amen. If I say Ronnie, you don't know who I'm talking about. Uncle Ronnie, thank you. Thank you. Amen. And amen. It's, uh, I know Brother Nathan sitting here looking over the congregation this morning. Amen. And uh, if he ever wondered if the battles was worth it, they're worth it all. They're worth it all. Amen. There's a, there's a great mercy that God has given this age. We have been so thankful for each of you. And uh, we want to take a, a moment this morning in dismissing of prayer, and we're going we're gonna to thank each of you. Uh, I do uh, want to make the announcement to our local assembly. Uh, Brother Donnie Reagan will be with us next Sunday morning at the church, um, and uh, that hasn't been announced yet, so I wanted to wait. Uh, he was uh, speaking to him this last week, and he said he'd make some time and come up and visit with us and be a part of our service next Sunday. Amen. We were so happy that he would be able to do that. So, amen, at the church next Sunday will be that. And we want to, this morning, I know there's been so many needs that's been met through these prayer lines. Amen. And we just want to take a moment this morning. Amen. I know you're standing next to your friends, to your family. Amen. Maybe you just might reach over and lay your hands on someone as we say prayer this morning in dismissal. Amen. And just, just for a moment. I want to thank the Lord for his mercy. Father, Lord, you didn't have to do it, but you did. You came by this way, Lord, through these last services. And Father, you've answered prayers of fathers and mothers. You've answered the prayers of pastors. Lord, the evangelists and Lord, the men of God that have spoke to these young people. Lord, there's been many prayer. But Lord, you're the God who answers prayer. We thank you for showing, Lord, your force among us this morning throughout these meetings. We thank you for every victory. We thank you for every life given. We thank you for every victory and every being, Lord, that's in these meetings. And, Father, this morning as we pray together, I pray that there would be a love that would pass through this building. Father, not one spirit could be left, Lord, but your great love would burn out every feeling. Lord, every little situation would just be dissipated, Lord. And, Father, your children could have its glory. Now, Father, we ask you to bless this camp and all the camp keepers, Lord. And, Father, we ask you that on the safe journeys home with these young people, the buses, Lord. Father, the vehicles and cars that are returning, Lord, I pray that the angels of the Lord would be about them, protecting them. We ask you that you would go with them, Father giving them mercies. Now, Father, we commit these meetings into thy faithful hands. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Now, uh, for memory's sake, I'm a Bible reader. God had people stack stones up so that years later they could say, what is those stones? And they could say, this is what God did. And so for memorial's sake, Amen. We, we want to take a camp picture with these young people. Uh, Brother Nathan is going to go outside, and the photographers are going to be there. But, but uh, to our older crowd, to you sitting in the back and things, if you don't mind, just stay seated a few moments and let our young people go out so they can make a good group picture out there. Amen. So that they can look back on this weekend and say, that right there is the Sunday morning. Amen. And I put an anchor down to what happened to me in that weekend, and they can pull it out. God bless you. Thank you for coming. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Ben. You are awesome in this place.
as I come into your presence, past the gates of praise, into your sanctuary, till we're standing face to face. I look upon your countenance, see the fullness of your grace. I can only bow down. 